Welcome to United by Trucks. Well, Barry and I have somehow made it to this cabin in Illinois, overlooking this awesome pond and that beautiful home place up there. We have got something really cool to show you today, so I hope you guys are excited. We're gonna go check out some cool stuff and we're gonna take you along with us. Y'all come on. Hey everybody, I'm Jesse from Level 7. Come on in. We're here with Jesse Vaughn, Level 7 Motorsports, and man, he's got some killer trucks to show you guys. Hope you guys are excited to see this tour of Level 7 Motorsports and the trucks they've got going. So this is the office. Um, this is just an area where uh, we can actually conduct business and have meetings with uh, potential clients or current clients. Any aspects of the build can be, you know, kind of have a little meeting in here. So that's the original building. Uh, we built that building eight years ago and really the intention was just for me to work out of that building by myself and then you know as we've grown there's been a need for more space and uh so my wife sean um you know you guys a call or email or anything uh, that's who you communicate with uh generally initially is uh my wife sean and she works in here and watches our kids in the back and and your chickens yeah our chickens we just got some chickens <laughs> <laughs> so this is the assembly shop um I kind of refer to this as my side of the shop. This is where, uh, you know, so once a, a car or a truck's been built, fabricated, uh, paint and bodied, you know, this is where uh, we would lay out, you know, all our blankets and rugs and stuff and do all the final assembly. So I'm in here most of the time doing wiring and plumbing and, and that type of stuff. So, you know, we've got shelving for parts for, you know, future builds and current builds and stuff like that. So most of the time my C10's in here uh, and then, you know, whatever other projects being put together in here. This side of the shop is what I call the fabrication side or the, the dirty side of the shop. <clears throat> right now there's not a lot of metal fabrication or any dirty work over here, but this was what I originally built, you know, that I would be able to do everything in here. And in the early years, um, I did everything in here from beginning to end. So, you know, we would tear stuff down, take the parts upstairs, uh, we'd have cars blasted or dipped or whatever, body work, paint. We have a paint booth here. Uh, we did everything in here. When we grew, you know, that's when we built on that side of the shop. And, um, and then now we're just too busy to, to facilitate everything. We're trying to be efficient with our time. So now the, the paint leaves and upholstery leaves. So when we do all the mock-up and full build, the initial build, it all happens in here. This is a 49 Suburban. Um, this is for one of our good friends. His name's Jonathan. We've been kind of going on and off on this project for probably four or five years now. He had built a, a Bronco with us before, and uh, we built a couple motorcycles for him. He saw this on Craigslist up by Milwaukee, and it was completely original then, and it was a uh, Vernon County Highway Department, so I guess Vernon County is in the Milwaukee area. And when we picked it up, it was still original. It drove, you know, up onto the trailer, but uh, we got it back here, and the, the plan was to, you know, redo everything structurally so the the chassis has been gone through it's got a, a roaster shop revo front end it's been triangulated four length in the back stock chassis but all box and you know strengthened up and stuff and so we took the front or the body off the frame and and uh, pretty much everything you know 12 18 inches up you know was cut off you know all the bottoms of this truck was all rusted out so we did all the all the metal um and then faux patina everything back in and it's got uh, a couple coats of satin clear on it. Really now it's just down to uh, doing the wiring and uh, putting upholstery in it and it's done. It's kind of a budget hot rod, you know, style of build. So it's got an LQ4 six liter truck motor in it, um, kind of decorated up. It's got a brand new turbo 400, a nine inch. We built fender well headers for it, trying to make it look like era, you know, like 60s, 70s era hot rod. Well, you nailed it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super cool. Beautiful. I, I really like this thing. And I really like the salt flats on it. 
Me too. Me too. And they're pretty good size. I think they're 20 by nines and 20 elevens or something. So they're, they're decent size. We put a, a full like 16 gauge floor down in it and built cross members in the body. Um, so it's a pretty solid stiff body now. All the sheet metal on the inside got redone and repainted like a satin brown. But it's got uh, classic instruments gauges in it. Um, just a repop, you know, radio. And then uh, Dylan built the uh, air conditioning panel that, that's underneath the dash. What we wanted to do is make a, you know, like an add-on, like a dealer installed package, you know, so that it looked like he maybe went to the dealership in the 60s or 70s and had air installed in it. So we use all our rest of mod air parts to, you know, kind of make it look cool. I want to talk about this thing right here. Yeah. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about what's going on here? Yeah, so I'll, I'll introduce you to Lemon Twist. This is Corey's truck. I guess the history between me and Corey is that whenever I built my yellow truck five or six years ago, the first LS Fest that I ever went to, I spotted this truck in the parking lot and I spot Corey and Chuck, his dad. Yeah. They were both outside, Southern gentlemen, ready to introduce themselves to me, a fellow truck enthusiast. Yeah. And we've been friends ever since. So he's been autocrossing pickup trucks for probably two years more than I have, or, or maybe even more than that. Yeah, he's a, a very good dude and um, throughout the years has come to trust us to, to help him with little project. This came here, <laughs> no joke, for a vintage air install and a transmission cooler. He's really allowed us to go further. We rewired this truck uh, this last winter, uh, put a new Holly EFI system on it, um, just try to refine this truck. And huge props to Corey and Chuck. They, they built this truck themselves. E every bit of this truck, um, they did themselves. Um, but you know, after using it now for six or seven years, you know, it was kind of time to, okay, we need to get air installed in this. Uh, let's go back and look at the wiring. Um, they had some drivability issues with the EFI system. So that's where some of those upgrades came along. And so Corey always had this thing where he had automatic transmissions in it, overheating issues with the transmission because of you know what he's doing with it. And then gearing restraints, you know, so having to really needing to change out final drive ratio to get it just right. So it, it had all these kind of workarounds or challenges when with autocrossing or, you know, using a, an automatic transmission. So what we're doing now, is installing one of these Bowler Race Prep T56 Magnums. And, and this is one that has the Corvette ZR1 close ratio gear set in it. One of the things that we've come to realize in our industry is that there was a need for the hydraulics. You know, So going from an automatic to a manual transmission, all the modern manual transmissions use uh, hydraulics to activate the clutch. And uh, well, obviously no vintage truck other than the late square bodies had hydraulic clutches. So there's been a lot of people over the years try to message us or email us and, and get help and say, how do you do the hydraulics? How, how did you do them on your square body? How, how are we doing them? What should we do? And there's always been too many variables. What pedal are you gonna use? Are you gonna use a stock pedal? Do you want the master cylinder on the firewall? So what we've tried to do here, and we're gonna show you here in just a few minutes, is we're gonna team up with Bowler Performance. Bowler Performance is gonna sell all these pedal assemblies on their website. Even if you had a manual pedal assembly or an automatic pedal assembly, you'll just be able to take that whole assembly out and you'll bolt in the Level 7 Motorsports Bowler Performance. Uh, pedal assembly and it'll have the hydraulics built into the hanger new pedal pads will be all powder coated and, and just ready to go so all the hydraulic stuff that's that's been technical and difficult to figure out for DIYers all that's going to be figured out and resolved now so with, with just a bolting part what's up Dylan how's it going man you doing all right good good well now that we got Jess out of the shop I wanted to talk to you just really quickly because I have seen you in here you know I've been here for a couple of days and you have just been in here working and holding this thing together yeah. along with Sean. How did you end up here? How did you get into a working at a cool, cool shop like this? Probably about four years ago, uh, I decided to make a career change and went out to Wild Tech out there in Laramie, Wyoming. Because of that, I got picked a top five out of school to go build a SEMA car for SEMA. So they sent us to Austin, Texas for two months and we built and thrashed on this car. During that time, I'd been in contact with Jesse. I found myself back here and I've been here ever since. Very, very cool. Well, just really quickly, man, what do you do here? It seems like you do it all, but I think you've got some pretty specialized <laughs> skills that I think it's important to, to talk about. Yeah, so I'm mostly fabrication. That was kind of what I took more to in school. Uh, yeah. But being here, a little bit different from the other shop I worked at, I get to play a part in every aspect of car building. So everything, start to finish, I at least have a hand in it. Since we're standing right here in front of this awesome square body, what's one of your favorite parts about this truck? 
Oh, well, it has to be this new engine that we just dropped in here. I'm not going to say too much because I don't know how much he's, he's, he's let, let on, but it should yeah. be a, a new, whole new monster today. We're actually about to see that here in this video. Uh, so we're, we're going to see what this thing can do. But really appreciate you uh, taking the time and, and being hospitable and letting us come up here and do this thing, man. Yeah, so man, not a problem. Appreciate you, Dylan. Yeah. Motorsports. Really, it started back in 2001. I started the business right out of high school. I knew that I wanted to own some type of uh, automotive performance business, and uh, really, I got into it to get myself a little discount on parts and build some stuff for myself. And uh, throughout the years, it kind of turned into building more cars and helping more people. And then um, I went full time doing this uh, about eight years ago now so level seven has been here in this location in this facility now for about eight years so uh so where we came from was kind of i grew up as a dirt bike kid you know five years old and kind of always into that you know motorsport like i don't know grunginess of of, of cars the performance side of things so uh naturally i gravitated towards you know more of that side of, of of the industry and so we're here now and we we do a lot of classic trucks a lot of chevy c10s and uh, really we build anything but this is kind of what we're passionate about really where it starts for me and how you know you got on my radar or how i began to know more about level seven motorsports is this truck you're standing right next to so tell us a little bit about the truck tell us you know if you know any of the history mm -hmm. um, just really anything you know about the truck and, and what you've done to yeah. it since uh since you've been working on it so whenever I was in high school, I graduated high school in the year 2000, and in that time period, that's when square bodies were kind of like the hand-me-down trucks. So in Southern Illinois, there was a lot of square body four-wheel drives and stuff, and I had a Toyota four-wheel drive, and I always liked square bodies. So a few years ago, I wanted to build another truck. I built a bunch of trucks for myself, and I wanted to finally get a square body. And so I was looking, I looked for a year and a half for a good original paint square body uh, Chevy truck. And uh, I finally was going to go down to Atlanta uh, for a weekend, so I started to browse Craigslist Atlanta and did stumbled. Did you come snatch this out of yeah. my backyard? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on the cheap, too. Yeah. It was right when, like, Man. everybody hadn't started to look for them yet. Right. So it was, like, six years ago. This was on Craigslist in Atlanta. It had been bought originally by Big Brother uh, in a family of, of three brothers. Yeah. And so he joined the military and moved to Hawaii, so he needed to sell it to Middle Brother. Middle Brother owned it for a few years. Uh, he took care of it, garage kept it. He sold it to Little Brother. Little Brother got it, blew up the motor, tore up the tranny. Uh, so they put a 383 and a 700R4 in it. It was lowered a little bit. Still a nice, nice original paint. And uh, I guess it became time to, to move on. So he put it on Craigslist. We snatched it up back then for, it was 5,200 bucks. Wow. Running, driving, OG paint built 383 700 r4 those yeah. tires and uh so anyways we brought it back we had built a lot of stuff for, and, and so we hadn't really been nailed down for any one thing yet so i told my wife i was like we've got to grab a, a vehicle build it it's something that we are and, and through association and marketing people can say oh that's level seven truck yeah. and, you know they'll know who we are from from that so that's where we went to with this in 2012 2011 I really got into road racing and autocrossing and and I'd raced a car and we actually were one of the finalists for the uh, Optima ultimate streetcar invitational in 2012 oh, in Las cool. Vegas so we got to take our car uh, to SEMA and we got to race it after SEMA at, you know for the invitational after that that's when I picked this truck up and I was like well I want to build a truck you know that we can cruise as a family you know, we can autocross, so we get into a little road racing, and you know, throughout the years now, it's gravitated more and more towards a race car. But um, yeah, so that's it's worked out really well for us. You know, just that this is my truck, or this is the shop's truck. You know, we're we're at a bunch of events, we're really racing, we're learning a lot, and, and then we've connected with a bunch of other truck dudes that yeah. are that are the same passion. You know, and so we've built a lot of trucks now. You know, from that association and through those relationships that this truck is has helped build. We're taking a look at the. 
L7MC10 or LSMC10. Yeah, our website's level seven, the word motorsports, yeah. so LSMC10. LSMC10. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I think we should uh, we should start right here with what I consider the meat and potatoes the wheel and tire package and the suspension. So tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Yeah, so throughout the years that's changed a little bit, but it's a stock chassis truck. Um, now, again, the industry's changed and a lot of things have evolved since since the beginning of this truck. When we first built this truck, really the money wasn't there for a full chassis for me. Yep. And really those weren't, I mean, those were like big dollar builds to do a full chassis when, you know, six years ago. Right. So um, what I did is off the shelf stuff. And really I wanted to show our customers too, like, Hey, you can take an, an original truck, you can buy ride tech suspension, you can bolt it on, you can do the four link, and you can have a pretty fun vehicle. So oh, yeah. I wanted to just kind of take off the shelf stuff, build a semi-competitive, semi-fun truck. And, and and now over the years we've we've progressed and we're still on all ride tech bolt-on front suspension in the front. Uh, we've changed to a spline sway bar to give us more spring or more bar rate and uh, allow us to run a 12 wide front wheel wow. and a 335 front tire. But when we originally built this, we put the chassis on our chassis table and we cut the chassis off behind the cab. So we back halved it. We built the four link. So it's a, you know, a parallel four link uh, with a long pan hard bar. Um, and we built the fuel tank and we raised the bed floor and did all that stuff. I'm glad I did it this way though. And the reason I'm glad is because I really like to learn and we've cut this rear suspension off and redone it like four times. Wow. So like now it works, but you know, like nobody's gonna really wanna do that. <laughs> right. You know, and I don't like doing that, but I, I do like that we've learned a lot about suspension design and geometry and, and stuff through this. So, you know, we don't mess with any stock chassis really anymore. All our customers, you know, we help you know, buy no limit chassis or speed tech chassis or, yeah. or whoever's chassis. So we, we get a better result ultimately by by using another engineer to, to build a chassis to get us where we need to go. You know, the bed floor is raised probably three inches and uh, it's running ride tech, single adjustable steel coilovers all the way around. It's a stock 12 bolt uh, C-clip axle and really it's it's done okay. Again, I really wouldn't go there. You know, if I was to recommend something, now we do full float nine inches for all our customers. but. Um, Again, this truck has just been one of those things where like, you know, I want to kind of show people too, like where you can start, you know, what things aren't really good enough. We learned so much by, by taking the long road, I guess, uh, to get there. Showing folks what, what is available to them out there, how it can be applied and what kind of results you can get out of, sure. out of something like that. So, sure. you know, you're in here talking about building full chassis, race trucks all sure. across trucks, sure. trucks that can really, you know, handle on the street but yet the first truck you built for the shop, you yep. know, still yep. has yep. a lot of yeah. the, the, the roots of the Chevy truck. And you know, I reply to a lot of messages and a lot of emails from DIY guys. And I have to, you know, think back to who I am as an individual too, and, and my money level, right? Yep. It's normal, I, you know, um, a lot of vehicles that we build for clients are, are on a different level, you know, and the money's different. Um, so when I get a lot of messages and emails, you know, a lot of guys are like, Listen, I want to have something fun. I want to drive it to the movies with my wife after Rona. And <laughs> and and I want to autocross still. So like a lot of guys really are looking for a lot of what we've done here. And that's, you know, you can bolt on off the shelf stuff and bolt in a four link and you can still have a lot of fun, you know. So a lot of those DIY guys, I'm not trying to stray you away from that because this is very good. You mentioned a 12 inch wide wheel. You mentioned a 335 <laughs> tire up front. Yeah. So is that a squared setup? Are yeah, you rocking so it's, the same in the rear? The, so the offset of the back spacing of the wheels is different um, just because of the way that this truck's built. But So a lot of our even full chassis trucks now, they're engineered to where we can run e either the same back space, so we can run an 18 by 12 or a 19 by 12 all the way around, and we can get very close to the same back space, so it is totally square. Um, but yeah, this one is the same width wheel and tire all the way around. Very cool. So at least then, you know, when we start to camber wear the front tires, we can put them on the back and put the back tires on the front wheels. So we have moved away from suspension, wheels and tires. Jesse, tell us about the work you've got going on in this bed. So when we raised the rails in the back of the chassis, we had to raise the bed floor. And I, everybody's pretty common familiar with that now. So uh, what we did is we just built the bed floor up. And the original theory was that we were trying to reduce weight in the entire truck. 
And so that's why I built uh, aluminum bed floor panels that can be removed and we can adjust suspension or we can take the fuel cell out or we can add fuel, um, whatever. So we have aluminum bed. And again, that's another learning curve. I shouldn't have taken any weight off the back. I should have left a steel floor and kept all the weight in the back. Oh. So now I'm ballasting weight. You know, now to try to get the balance of the truck, we actually have lead ingots that are uh, in a basket and we, we have, we've ballast weight more towards the back of the truck. So wow. however the, cool the aluminum bed floor is, it was counterproductive and weight transfer. <laughs> we needed more weight back here. So Lesson learned. Lesson learned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so another thing that you see in the back here is that we have a, a wing or a spoiler and uh, it's really to generate downforce you know it, it it's set really aggressive now for the second gear autocross events uh, it does work it does push down on the back of the truck and help promote more traction Very um, cool. so that's why this is here and you can really on a road course if you watch video and you see stills of me like in a third fourth gear pull on a straight you can see the truck is really squatting and the wings really pushing down so the truck has a lot of a lot of traction at, at speed Let's move toward the interior. I have a feeling this roll cage is going to come back into play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the main hoop, um, you know, it's your typical main hoop with a harness bar and diagonal support. Um, and then it's, uh, we built a bulkhead on the back of the back of the main hoop where the uh, rear down bars come through the, the bed head and they, and they bolt and sandwich the back of the cab sheet metal. So it's all tied together. And then there's, you know, a low door bar and, uh, and then a, a brace that braces the main hoop into the, the door bars. And then we've got our hydraulic pedal assembly for the clutch. And there's a lot of things going on in here. Holly EFI gauges that communicate via canvas to the Holly Dominator. There's, there is a radio. It's a six speed, um, race seats from Sabelt and their harnesses. Um, and it's a little different, you know, there's no carpet, you know, we just kind of wrapped our line the whole floor. And you can wipe it out. Um, you know, always when you're racing, you're constantly fighting like floor mats being under your feet or carpet being weird. So we just kind of took all that out of the equation. Yeah. Do you drive this truck on the road much? Not at all now, really. Not no. at all now. <laughs> no. And I, I mean, think I know I, the reason. I still drive it to like <laughs> Ace to grab some bolts every now and then. But uh, you know, we originally designed this cage. It's built the way that it is so that I could pull the race seats and put the bench in. Yeah. So my bench will fit in this. Uh, it's a pain in the butt to do it. Uh, so we don't do it and really now we got two kids so even my wife was one of us is with kids so it's yeah. never uh, in a situation where we're we're driving the truck very yeah. much now looking under the bonnet so again like you'll notice that it's it's stock chassis uh, it's got ride tech bolt-on suspension the only thing that's changed is the the front spline sway bar um, but yeah you can see we got big wide wheels and tires um, and we've started to cut and remove a lot of weight from the front end of the truck. In previous years, you, it had an LSA blown LS motor. So LSA supercharged iron block, and then now we're at naturally aspirated all aluminum block. And so this motor is a Texas Speed built. It's a re-sleeved 5.3 liter that was an aluminum block. So they machined out all the cylinders and then pressed in ductile iron sleeves and then board and stroke that. So this is a 450 cubic inch or like a 7.3 liter, wow. uh, 12 to one compression. So now this motor, you know, with removing the blower, the block weight difference, the cooling system for the supercharger, we're gonna reduce the front end weight by 200 pounds. And really this motor is gonna make another 100 horsepower than the last motor did. Wow. And to complement the, the weight loss, uh, that motor made peak torque at like 2,800 RPM. So, you know, even when you got into it hard in second gear, I mean, it would make all its torque right away and want to spin the tires. So now this motor's power band and its peak power doesn't even, or peak torque doesn't even come into about 52 or 5,500 RPM. Wow. So now the truck can get gain mile an hour before it really brings in peak torque. So traction will be better. And then the way that it loads up the rear suspension, you know, is more gradual and progressive. So theory is that this will work a whole lot better than, than what was in it before. So we just used wash tubs, uh, smooth firewall panels and smooth the firewall out. And we've had a lot of really great partners along this way that have really helped promote the truck and work with us. And Holly's been a big one. Um, they've really helped bring this truck, you know, out in the beginning and then now to progress the truck into a more competitive form, they've, they've helped a ton. Before we wrap up on the truck here, we, we've talked a lot about the motor, we talked a lot about what's in the engine bay, but we really didn't dive in on the transmission. And I think that's a really critical part to your success, whether it's on the track or in the shop working, you know, working on customer builds. Tell us a little bit about the trans setup in this truck. 
Yeah, so we're running a T56 Magnum, and this transmission is built by Bowler Transmissions, and, and what we purchased was their Level 2, and that includes every upgrade that Tremec offers uh, to turn that into a more of a road race, autocross, higher RPM, heavier torque load situation. And then we went even further with their Corvette ZR1 close ratio gear set. So industry standard kind of now in, in the pro touring world is the T56 Magnum. And it's a great transmission out of the box, but when you get into a, a higher RPM, higher foot pounds of torque, um, racing situation, the Tremec says that there are upgrades that need to be made to make the transmission live. And uh, Bowler Performance offers what they call their level two, and, and that's all those modifications that Tremec says that you need to do. And what those are is um, they replace the second gear. Um, so early on when Tremec manufactured the Magnum, in OE situation after a few years, they were noticing uh, a harsh shift from one to two. And what they did to fix that was um, they changed the tooth angle and reduced the amount of teeth in that second gear blocker. And so it made the transmission OE format shift better and live longer uh, shifting from first to second. It took away that notchiness. But that makes that second gear blocker ring um, not last long in a, in a racing situation. So uh, what Tremec says to do is replace that second gear with the non-advanced design and the 1-2 synchro hub. And then they replace the all, all the blocker rings, but the 1-2 have a full carbon blocker ring, and then there's a carbon hybrid blocker ring that goes throughout the rest of the gears. And then they replace the shift fork pads with a Vespol, uh, a very easy to slide shifter pad. And then that Vespol, it, it, it's used in jet engines and, and it's good for a high heat tolerance too. So um, a lot of people don't run these manual transmissions with coolers and they've even seen uh, transmission fluid temperatures in these Magnums go as high as 300 degrees and Whoa. the Vespol pads don't melt they still last and they still shift good so man so those are all the upgrades that's made in a level two package and why when you get to like a 600 foot pounds of torque and and you're doing more autocross road racing you have to have you know the the upgrades from from Tremec and, and Bowler to make the transmission last you know that first gear to second gear is the hardest one and that's the most important thing to upgrade so the 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 next upgrade with after the level two is the, the ZR1 close ratio gear set, gear set. And that offers you a 2.29 ratio first and a 1.61 second and a 1.21 third. So that gives you more mile an hour in first and second. And then really you can, you know, this truck makes 700 foot pounds of torque and it can autocross through a wide range of RPM in second and never run out of second gear. Very cool. And then it even offers a 0.81 uh, overdrive in fifth so even shifting fourth and even into fifth on a road course is a good a good gear change so that's what we run is the bowler stage two with a zr1 gear ratio set and, and even if money was not a factor you can go even further with a full synchronized gear setup uh, in, a, in a magnum so yeah th this has kind of become the standard now is a, a race prepped t56 magnum Awesome.
Hope you guys enjoyed that. You can thank Barry for uh, braving, yeah, for braving that. That was sick. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. That was sick. I can't wait to see if I can truck <laughs> whip it. Yeah, two tests with me and All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of United by Trucks. I hope that you enjoyed this look inside Level 7 Motorsports. As you can see, Jesse and Sean have a killer business here, and they're doing just some really, really cool stuff. So I want you to stay tuned to the next couple of episodes that are coming out of this shop because we've got a really cool install and product release video coming, and we've definitely got some more profiles of trucks that Level 7 and Jesse and Sean have had their hands all over. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Definitely smash that thumbs up button if you like what you've seen today and leave a comment down below. Let us know what your favorite part about this look inside Level 7 Motorsports is. We'll catch you next time right here on United by Trucks. Cue the music.